This is wonderful. Oh, I really, look at the fly bridge. I really like this. Oh, oh, that hurt the back. That's pretty cool. This is just a really neat boat. I am being a diva. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd let me out. Hi there, this is Captain Q. Join us as we travel hither and yon to show you some great deals on some really interesting boats and maybe learn just a little bit with each one. Good morning. Hey, Rende. How are you? Good. What a gorgeous day. A little gray here in Belfast. We've got a special treat for you today. I have a, I, we have a little change today in our... Wait, what are you talking about? Well, you know, a lot of sailors eventually get old, like Captain Q, who is very old. When you get really old, you get tired of pulling on the halyards and reaming in the sheets and, and just doing all this work on the boat, and the boat tips over and does all this stuff. So there's a special consideration for the elder sailor. It's not death, but it's transfer to something a little different. Now, walk with me. Can you do that? Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm walking, because I'm going to come over and show you something that I think you're going to like. And uh, right here, we have the answer to every retiree's yachting experience. Uh, where's the mast? There are no masts. That's the best <laughs> thing about it. There are no masts. There are actually two engines. Is that a new kind of sail? No, there's no sails, Randy. There's no sails. All right. This is a power boat. It runs on diesel fuel. Uh, it's 46 feet long. It's built by Nordhaven. These boats have actually gone across the Atlantic just under their own power. Can you imagine that? No sails, just turn on the engine and go to Ireland. Wow. Pretty amazing. Nordhavens were known for uh, this, this uh, uh, forward uh, cabin house, control house, uh, with the, the uh, sort of fishing boat style windows that are all tilted forward to cut down on the glare for the helmsman a nice big broad sun deck behind the uh, wheelhouse. And then uh, this is this section up here, this little, this little breakwater here. I, th I think they used to call that a Portuguese uh, breakwater right on the, uh, just forward of the wheelhouse. And you can stand behind that. And when big seas come over, they'll break on that before they break on the cabin itself. This is wonderful. Uh, there's one addition to this boat that's, that's a little unusual for the Nordhavens. It has a flying bridge and a flying bridge is just a place to control the boat uh, outdoors on top of the boat, so to speak, and uh, gives you great views, and you get sunshine, and it's, it's, it's delightful. You've seen rub rails before, right? Yep. There's a massive rub rail right there. Maybe a rub strake or rub rail. Uh, we've also got some nice heavy-duty stainless hawse holes there uh, to run your spring lines through. If you're at a, a higher pier, you have, a, you have a, a door to get into the boat, just step right through that and into the cockpit. There's wonderful viewing from the, the main salon on this. And uh, these are all plate glass windows. And I think they've got to be at least a quarter inch thick or so. And they're going to withstand any errant uh, sea that might come up and whack you in the side. Here's a nice little feature too. You're always looking for a place to tie off your uh, bumpers. They put these on, a, on cleats, which are on a track, so that you can adjust these anywhere you want them, depending on the, on the contours of the dock down here. So this is really, I like this a whole lot. That's a great feature on the boat. You see, we have another doorway. We've been crawling up and down 11 foot ladders here and uh, getting on some of these boats. The, fortunately, this boat happens to be floating. We know what that's gonna do to the score on this boat. We can just step aboard, just like so, boom. And I am now on the boat. There's no ladder climbing and uh, it works pretty well. I can go in and I can come out. On the transom, you see a nice swim ladder right here with a foldable ladder that'll pop right over the side and drop down. And that, plus, there's a nice handrail here, so it's very stable. If your legs have been walking around for 65 or 70 years or something, you're going to like to have a little more stability at hand. Uh, on the transom of this boat is a very nice set of davits. Davits are nothing more than a, a rig, and they look different on every boat practically, to support the uh, inflatable. Here are a set of handles to crank it up and down. If you're really far offshore, I might tend to think about pulling the motor off and, and putting it in a set of stands somewhere on the cockpit here. They don't seem to have one, but that would be my choice. Here's the door for the aft cockpit. 
uh, so you can step right out there and that's pretty cool. They're very heavily uh, constructed, very heavily laid up hulls. This boat weighs, I think it's in the neighborhood of uh, 50,000 pounds. There's just one walkway on the boat and they put one walkway and you could have one on either side but there's not much reason to. Now this is a great area up here on the bow. We have a big Maxwell anchor windlass right here and a, a nicely uh, seated Bruce anchor. On deck here there's two outlets for water. One's going to be fresh water and one's going to be salt water. And it's nice to have both. Uh, you can do the initial uh, washing down with the salt water and then give everything a fresh water spray after that. Crust of salt will absorb more moisture and it will make things start to mold and you'll have other problems. So you can also use it for a shower up here too. What's a shower? <laughs> Look what we have here. Even though we're on a power boat, what do we have here? It looks like a derail. It is. Good. Good heavy duty derails. This is a little seat uh, for an extra propane tank and some uh, water hose and so on. Plus an, a fun place to sit and easy to move about. As you can see, the uh, Captain Q measuring stick is also used in motion. We'll go around to the other side here of this break, break water. And this is, I mean, if you're here, this thing is really solid. I mentioned the side gate, which allows you to step out onto a higher uh, dock. A good place to dive off of here, too. Uh, Don't do fun. it. <laughs> it's not worth it. No, I won't. I won't. But it's very solid. We'll go into the wheelhouse. And wheelhouses are really fun because you, really, you feel like the master of your own world when you're in a wheelhouse. Come on inside. Okay, now, ah, this is a really nice new helmsman chair they put on this boat in recent time. And if you notice, my field of vision is literally 360 degrees because I can see all the way forward, out to port, out to starboard, there's starboard. <laughs> uh, that's port. <laughs> Which side are you on? And then all the way out through these two aft windows here. So um, this is wonderful. He's got his Garmin right in front, so you've got uh, all your instructions to, uh, to, for directions and land masses and so forth showing up there. Uh, a couple of different radar units, engine controls. Looks like you have two engines, uh, two engine controls. We do have en two engine controls. This is the main engine. This is, your th this is your gears, forward, pull this back, reverse. This red knob is gonna be your throttle, so speed forward and reverse. Um, this, this set of controls over here is for a 40 horsepower uh, wing engine as they call it and what the wing engine does it gets you home in case the big guy decides to pack it in they would be obscene for them to both pack it in simultaneously but this is a single single engine single prop main drive this will push you home probably about half speed i mean imagine maybe four knots four to five knots at the most we've got two things here we know what those are don't we little bow thruster joysticks bow thruster just a bow thruster? Well, there's a stern thruster too. Whoa. Here we have the whole electrical panel. We've seen this around the navigation tables on other boats, but it's gonna control everything that's electrical on the boat. And you can see what's charging right now. There's, this boat's on a charging system, so she's charging at 13.73 uh, volts. This is a really nice feature. There's a, a bunk up here behind the, uh, the, behind the captain at the wheel, and there's a good sitting area. So uh, your friend or, or partner or whomever can sit here and eat a snack or read a book and they can also lie down on this uh, full length really wide bunk for some people that's not going to be wide enough so uh, what they've done and you have a really big double and you can sleep there all day long while while the helmsman powers you off into uh, your next adventure. And if you have some kids, imagine your grandchildren sitting up there. How, what a good time they'd have. They can have Lego cities on the table here. Um, it, it's a really great arrangement. In the meantime, you've got a chart space here for the uh, ubiquitous chart book. It's just the right size. But let's head down to the uh, main salon. I think you're gonna like this down here. All right. Yeah. Now, oh, we've already, <laughs> Sea Dog's already made it down here, and uh, she really likes the fireplace. This is a diesel-fired fireplace. Uh, it has a little fan that's, that's just heat-controlled. You see, I can stop with my finger. 
but that's just going to move a little hot air off of the stove. And we've left the door open aft here because this heater is heating this space up so well. It's terrific. We have a, an L-shaped settee arrangement here. Yeah. Now I want you to take a look at this one down here. This is run on a gear system and all you need to do is turn this crank and the whole table is going to lower and it'll be all sitting right on this on this one tube. That's nice and easy. It's very clever, very nice and easy. Captain Q's measuring stick in here. We can get another one of me around here, maybe another couple more. So we could see six, seven very cozy people. I like this. This is this is really nice. I've got wonderful views again all down the port side of the boat and all down the starboard side of the boat of uh, Belfast Harbor here. I'm coming down to the galley. It's a half step down. So here we are, a really nice tight galley. Look what I found. Uh, deep sinks. Two really deep sinks. Go swimming down there. Those are wonderful. And you've got fresh uh, water, hot and cold, uh, just like home. And you've got another foot pedal here for salt water. Look at that. I can actually pump this one. See that? So there's a, a, a pump for your salt water. Rinser. Uh, there's good storage for everything, including your vodka and your peanut butter. Some essentials on, on any boat. 12 kW Northern Lights generator. So at sea, you're going to have 110 volts of power. And uh, there's also an inverter on board as well, a, a 2,000 watt inverter. Now this boat also has reverse cycle air conditioning and heating systems. But I like this galley and we're powering along and my helmsman up there who happens to be my five-year-old grandson, I thought he'd be in charge, suddenly he's hitting some waves and I think, oh my God, I just saw a wave go by, but I didn't move. Why didn't I move? Because this boat has Niad stabilizers on it. What's a Niad stabilizer? I thought you'd never ask. A Niad stabilizer is simply on the boat. On either side of the boat, there is a little wing coming out underneath the bottom of the boat. And the boat's going along. Suddenly the boat starts to rock. And when it feels that, this stabilizer is going to tilt on its axis and force that part of the boat back up straight. Now the boat's going to try and go the other way too. Well, guess what? We got another one of these on the other side. And that does the exact same. So the boat roll, starts to roll and the stabilizer says, nope, you're not rolling. We're keeping it straight. Oh, you're not going that way. You're keeping it straight. It can reduce up to 70% of the roll of the boat. The roll in a power boat, especially with an engine that goes all the time, creating smell, is one of the major causes of mal de mer uh, for crew members, especially new crew members. Stabilizers will keep this just about as flat as we are right now tied to the dock. Really cool, really cool thing. Okay, Randy, we've just taken the, the uh, floorboards up in the, in the main salon, so you can really get a bird's eye view of all the engine works. Here's your uh, 12kW generator. It's a nice housing, so it'll keep it quiet. Uh, here's the main uh, Cummins diesel right in front of you. And uh, right beside it is the Volvo Penta uh, wing engine to get you home. Not bad. Okay. It's a crawl space. Okay. There's a lot of nice manifolds for the fuel tanks right beside you there, Rande, on that wall just to your left. Yeah. The two big Raycor filters. Look at the size of these guys right here. Yeah. There's an air intake filter for the engine. I think that looks like it could use a replacement. It's sort of sucked in. These engines require tremendous amounts of air, tremendous amounts of air. And you see the, uh, the coupling to the shaft and nice bright bolts down there. It's not a lot of rust and everything. And if you look further aft down this way, you'll see the water lift muffler for the, uh, for the little uh, wing engine. And this is all part of the dry stack uh, for the uh, engine itself, for the main engine. And that's 146 horsepower right there. You gotta sleep somewhere, right? Yep. Follow me on down here. We've got a really nice space down here. Notice there's a nice hand railing on the side uh, for somebody to hang on to. We have a true queen size bed. It's almost king size, but this is really a nice space. Uh, we don't even need to show the captain's stick on this because right now there's the captain's length and that's six feet right there, so six feet plus. We <laughs> didn't notice the captain likes a big fan in his cabin. 
Now I wouldn't want to set up bolt right when that's turned on. It could be exciting. And we have two port lights out here and those can stay open most of the time except when you're underway. Never good to leave port lights open. This is a cedar line hanging locker for your clothes so they'll stay sweet. Now here every master cabin needs a master head, right? So here we have a really nice master head complete with an electric toilet, electric flush, nice Corian counters there. Its own private shower stall here. Oh, that's nice. There's a, uh, a door, and that door will find out where all those little gremlins are going to sleep. And that's the uh, children and the grandchildren. And they're going to be right through here. And they have their own privacy door right here. And right behind me is a companionway up to the wheelhouse. So they have their own companionway to come down here. They don't have to go through the master stateroom. And here's a nice, easy opening sliding door. And we step into this space, which I really like. That's some good headroom. Great headroom. I'm six one. I can't. I can't jump to hit this this king size bed, which could be divided down the middle. And I've got one behind me too. A high bunk right here, sort of a Pullman style, underneath which is lots of drawer storage here. They've filled up every space with um, storage that you could possibly need. I like to see on both. The nice fit and of course the finish obviously this is beautiful and forward we give this group of folks here their own head and a shower space now forward to that is the chain locker and randy will pop that open for us and you can see the the other end of the chain pipe coming down there where the chain will run right down through that area and, and pile itself up in the bilge of the boat. Very neat and tidy in there. So as we come up, this, they've turned this area into a little workbench uh, to do minor uh, repairs. And I move back up to the wheelhouse. And speaking of topside, let's go right up to the fly bridge. We haven't been up there yet. We come up to this item. This, by the way, is the dry stack. It's the exhaust for the engine, for the main engine. And this is instead of a wet exhaust, which goes out through the stern of the boat. This will pump dry exhaust out here. It's nice to have this elevated because even going downwind, anything coming out of here is going to go that way over your head. Anyway, they've added this flybridge up here, which is not a normal for the boat. And they've put on a big aluminum uh, scaffolding up here to hold the two radar units and uh, some uh, running lights here. And it's got a GPS uh, antenna. And you can barely see a shadow on top of this canvas underneath, but that, that shadow is coming from uh, solar panels up there. There's a six-person life raft right here. I'd like to know that that's been inspected within two years of, of putting it on the boat. Here's our wheel with a set of instruments, repeat instruments underneath here. Right there, there's your engine controls and your, your throttle and, and your uh, reverse and neutral levers. And a nice wheel, so that's, that's the rig up there. And you've got a nice bench. So you can sit here and be king of the castle and uh, just do what you want to do. I don't know if they've got repeaters for the thrusters. Yep, there's two repeaters for the bow thrusters here. So you can watch yourself blow right off the dock forward and blow right off the dock aft. It's pretty cool. Would you do anything to augment this? The seating on the side here, I'd like to see this uh, made up a little higher and maybe a little area right in here for some railing just to keep you from stepping off the side, which would be uh, uncomfortable to say the least. So it just needs a little protection piece in there, not much. It can be metal, it can be uh, uh, just a wire, but this is even still a little low. You know how we like our cockpit combings and boats? We like you know, so sitting here, I think I'd probably redesign this a little bit. So here we are, four or six people sitting around this table, enjoying a nice al fresco lunch. My wife would love this boat. She should have come with us today, but anyway. Yeah, where would you take the boat? What's that? Where would you take the boat? Just head south. I don't have to go too far south. The Bahamas, this would be fine at the Bahamas. She draws five feet, which is borderline uh, depth for the Bahamas for... Um, the intercoastal waterway, you, you've got plenty of room still, but you don't want to do five and a half or six feet necessarily. 
Uh, how did you like that? Did you enjoy this little trip? It was super different. It was roomy, um, luxurious. It's a home on the water. Captain Cute is not so dissimilar than a lot of other retirees or near retirees who just hate to give up an aspect of the sea by selling the sailboat and retiring to the villages in Florida somewhere. You still have room to have your children and your grandchildren come stay on the boat. You can sleep two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, almost ten people on this boat. If you've got that many grandchildren, you've got to bring them all on board and they'll have a ball. Think about it. They can go run about in the, in the little inflatable here. They can jump off the stern and go swimming. Uh, in warm waters, uh, dive off the upper deck. How much fun is that? We've always wanted to dive as high as we could. Right now, most of these Nordhavens, oh, uh, start around a million dollars almost. Wow. And the used ones, good used ones, are down 500,000, 600,000, maybe as low as 400,000. This particular boat could be had for $209,000. The boat's not perfect nor would you expect it to be for that price. If it was perfect, you'd be spending another three or $400,000. So it's a terrific buy. We've had so many notes from many of you wonderful viewers saying, ah, if I just wasn't so old, I'd love to go get on one of these boats you're showing and go sailing. But it's just not in the cards. Come down here, get rid of the condo, and move aboard. And can I get a rating? Oh, a rating? We've never rated a powerboat yet, have we? No. I'm going to give it... Uh, a solid 10 to start with. I mean, who's going to deny this, right? We're this. And on top of that, I'm going to smack it with nine because you're going to get, you're going to get the whole fam damly on here and they're going to have a great time and they're going to love grandpa and grandma and we'll know right where our kids are all the time. It'll just be the best fun. It's just a giant playground of water for them. I like this. I think if my wife had come on this particular shoot, uh, she'd be up selling her car right now, possibly, to move on board. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. That We're having too good a time doing these things, so... Uh, you can hit the bell or not. Between episodes, feel free to hop onto Instagram or Facebook and f look for little previews of what might be coming your way. And please come back, and we'll hope to find that something else desperate. that will... Desperate? Please come back. <laughs> You're awfully close to the edge. <laughs>